In today's video, we're going to talk about my four underrated neighborhoods to live in Norfolk, Virginia, and we're starting right now. Hey, my name is Sam Santalone, and I'm a real estate agent in the Hampton Roads area. That goes from Virginia Beach through Williamsburg, and I do videos every week about living and moving to the area. So today we're talking about four neighborhoods that I think are extremely underrated. This neighborhoods that people don't really talk about uh, that I think are good value in places that I think you would love to live in, all based in different price ranges in Norfolk. So number one is going to be in the northern section of Norfolk called, or actually two neighborhoods next to each other, called Bayview Beach and Cape View Colony. So looking on the map, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So if you look at Norfolk in general, here's Norfolk right here. Now, on the north section, this whole area is considered ocean view, this whole area where the long, several miles of beachfront is. And if you go down right in the center of ocean view, just south of there are a couple neighborhoods called Bayview Beach and Cape View Colony. Now, one of the big reasons why this area is important is because beach access is very, very valuable. And also on top of that, beach access in a way that you don't have to park or fight for parking to get to is also very valuable. Now to boot, having a place to live close to beach that you can actually walk to and not pay a whole lot of money for is also extremely valuable. That's where these two neighborhoods come into play. So looking at this Sea Ocean View Avenue right here, this whole road, well, just north of there, that's all the beachfront, and there are many access points, public beach access points, to the beach from Ocean View. Now, just south of there, south of Ocean View Avenue, just north of an area that's, that's called Little Creek, just north of there is a Cape View Colony, and just west of there is Bayview Beach. So, if you notice, First of all, you're going to see a lot of Cape Cod style. You see a lot of older style houses. That's when a lot of these uh, neighborhoods were built. Uh, so you see like these houses were built in like the last 15 years. So if you just walk down the road here, you see a lot of Cape Cod style. You'll see a lot of 50s style. You'll have to see a lot of 60s houses in here as well, as, including some that are built in the 40s and even in the 50s. So there's nothing necessarily fancy about this area. The location and proximity to the beach is the biggest benefit that you have to buying in this area for the price. These houses are going to go anywhere from like the upper 200s that can exist in the, in the 200s, upper 200s. Mostly they're going to be in the 300s and the $400,000 price range depending on the size which can be anywhere from three bedroom, one bath or two four bedroom, sometimes five bedroom uh, houses. Or they can go up into the you know fours, maybe close to five if it's a, one of those larger houses. And so size of house in proximity to beach is a big deal right here. And I'll show you where the beach accesses are. So if you look at so for example, Kingston Avenue is right here. Dropping a pin on the corner of Kingston and Inlet Road. This is uh, near Bayview Beach and Cape, uh, Cape View Colony area. If you, walk, drive, well, if you walk all the way over just one block, this is a public beach access right here. This is off of Inlet Road, but all you have to do is cross, cross over Ocean View Avenue, which can be busy. This is not the easiest way to get to the beach, but it can be very convenient if you want uh, quick access. There are several there. Cape View Avenue has one. Grove Avenue has another one near Cones Beach over here. There are several all up and down this area on, these, on Ocean View Avenue. Now, in addition to that, another walking distance spot that's cool is your close proximity to Bold Mariner Brewing, which is right here on the corner of Cape View and Ocean View Avenue. That's a pretty big deal because it's hard to find those types of breweries within either walking distance or very quick car access uh, from your house. So that's another benefit of being in this Cape View Colony or Bayview Beach area as well. Uh, and so in addition to that, I'm going to zoom out, you'll see also accessibility. Once you get off of Ocean View, drive Ocean View, you can go down a shore drive, connect all the way to Virginia Beach, all the way over there, or you can go over towards 64 as well in the other direction as well. So you're not too far away from the Little Creek Amphibious Base or the Norfolk NOB. You're about equidistant, about 12-ish minutes away from either one of them. Now there's some drawbacks to living in this area, however, though. One is going to be, again, you're buying in a neighborhood that's not very exciting. It's kind of boring to me, uh, the house styles, some of them I don't not really a fan of. On top of that, if you're close to Little Creek, the Little Creek, uh, the Little Creek is what it's called. There are some areas that will require flood insurance. So this being the whole area we're talking about right here, if you're closer to the Little Creek side or near the actual creek itself, you might be dealing with some flood insurance as other people do on the south side of Ocean View, southeastern side. 
But the, the benefit to this, uh, though, is that if you're just off of the creek, you will not usually have to have any required flood insurance. Big deal to be able to have no, no flood insurance in a single family house for the 300,000 price range and that close a block or two from the beach. So that's all a big benefit. And the reason why I think this is a very underrated area. So shifting attention to number two on the list, which is the, a little bit further south and west of uh, Ocean View, is over closer to Granby Street, which is in the, just north of Colonial Place, north of Ghent, north of all the places you might have heard of a lot when you think about Ghent or when you think about North which is suburban acres. So this whole area here, Talbot Park, East Belvedere, this whole section, which is just north of Colonial Place and north of Ghent, this area I've talked about quite a bit because I love the price, which you can get for the money in this section and not have to pay also most of the areas in, uh, don't require flood insurance. But just north of there and, and east is this area called Suburban Acres. It's kind of hidden in the corner. You just again, you drive by it and don't even realize it's there. One of the reasons is because it's right behind Harris Teeter, which I think is a big benefit. You you could walk to the grocery store. It's a great grocery store. It's one of my favorite grocery stores in Norfolk. There are houses in here mostly in the 60s. This is a 60s kind of neighborhood, and you'll find some, some mid-century modern elements in here as well, but you find nice high sidewalks, some wider streets in here, a little bit wider lots, and you can you pay more for that. So for example, these are gonna be in the threes, fours, and sometimes low fives. You're also closer to a lot more stuff south, in like for example, near Ghent, near Colonial Place, uh, near Chelsea and West Ghent, where all those walkable restaurants and bars are. Uh, so you're closer to that, but you're also closer to uh, uh, private schools. So if you don't like the idea of being in the public school areas in Norfolk, you can do private schools. So for example, you're just down the street from Norfolk Collegiate, you're down the street from Norfolk Christian. Uh, you're not too far away from two of the primary uh, uh, public, uh, private schools uh, in Norfolk. You're also easy access to 64, which is 64 goes all the way down closer to up towards the tunnel near Hampton, Norfolk, but you're also going down the way towards Virginia Beach, connects to 264. You can get pretty easy access to a lot of other parts of Hampton Roads in Norfolk and Virginia Beach. Now, a lot of these houses are going to be three bedrooms and four bedrooms. Some of them are going to be five. You'll see some larger houses in here. You can see how large of a lot and sometimes how deep of a uh, uh, a uh, lot these houses are built on, so you're not up, up, like crammed up against each other. I love the, the lined streets, the tree lined streets as well. I think this is an awesome neighborhood for the price. Well built houses, a lot of brick houses in here. And again, if you like mid century modern, you'll find some mid century modern sprinkled in and around this uh, this neighborhood as well in, in Norfolk. I'm gonna drop a pin on Thole Street, which is a, a large connecting road uh, between 64 and Granby Street, which is a very important road too. It connects. It's close to Norfolk Christian, but just see some real nice streets in here. And even Thole Street itself is not a very busy road as far as you don't speed a lot on this road. It's a 25 mile an hour road. I think that's a big deal too. You can see them in here anywhere from 1,500 square feet over like 25, 27, sometimes over 3,000 square feet. Uh, you've got a lot of benefit, bang for buck, great neighborhood, tucked away in the corner of Norfolk and close to the Harris Teeter off of Granby Street. That moves us over to the number three neighborhood, which is further west in Norfolk, the north northwestern side, close to the Norfolk Navy base, which is Lock Haven. I've mentioned this before in a couple of other videos. I like this one for the price. You drive right by it on Hampton Boulevard, don't even notice it's there. That's one of the reasons why it's so underrated because you just don't even realize it's there. I think what happens is, if you notice, this is Lock Haven right here. Zooming out, a lot of Ghent, Larchmont, this is where a lot of the focal point uh, points are in southwestern and in, in Norfolk in general because it's so in demand. It's got Old Dominion over there, lots of restaurants. But once you cross over, uh, uh, go on Hinton Boulevard across the Lafayette River Bridge, you'll get to this little nook. And it has a lot of the same elements to it as Ghent does and as La Larchmont does further south, but you're just further away from those, those parts of the areas. You're, you're further from Ghent. But this area is extremely exquisite. It's got a lot of great trees. The houses in here are very, very nice. You're talking colonial style houses in the, like built in the 40s, the 30s. You'll see some in the 50s. You'll see, even see some in the 60s. You'll find that these houses are also larger. So these are in the 25, usually 2,000 to 2,500 square feet. You can go up to 3,000. 
4,000. It's kind of like a peninsula as well. You'll deal with some flood insurance in some very specific spots along the edges near the water possibly, but most of the time you don't even, you don't even deal with that as much either. You deal with a little bit of flood insurance as you go around the edges in some very specific spots, but most of the time you don't even really deal with that either, but you're only five minutes away from Norfolk Navy Base. You're about 15 minutes away from downtown Norfolk and Ghent, uh, even closer to that really. And because you're so close to Hampton Boulevard, you're only like six, seven minutes away from Old Dominion University. So if, that, if you uh, want to buy a house there and you have kids that are in college or they're aspiring to go to college, you're not that far away from a Division I school, uh, which is right here. It has a great football program and you're about, again, six, seven minutes away from that. But you're going to be paying in the fives to start. Most of them are going to be sixes, sevens, and eights. You'll see the large ones along the water are going to be over a million dollars. If you've got uh, the pier, got boat access, that's well over a million dollars. There's some great properties that are tucked away in this neighborhood. Now, that goes to our number four neighborhood that I love, going into Ghent. And I've talked about Ghent all the time, but specifically one neighborhood in Ghent is Ghent Square, the southeastern corner of Ghent. And I'll zoom out so you can see this whole section right here is Ghent Square. Now, most of Ghent was built in the first half of the 1900s, like 19 to like 1940 or 50. And that's what makes Ghent so charming. And a lot of the, the walkable aspects of Ghent have a lot of older houses, a lot of older uh, uh, strip malls and places to shop. But if you go in the southeastern corner of Ghent, this area was completely re-renovated in the 1980s, early, early 1980s Ghent Square, between the rest of Ghent and also the Neon District of Norfolk, which is closer to downtown Norfolk. Now in Ghent Square, there's a lot of attached houses that are in the like, 1800 to 2500 to 3000 square foot range. You got some detached houses as, as well, larger ones, big ones like 3,000, 4,000 and up, big houses in this area. Now the prices are going to be a lot of ranging prices. So for example, there are condos in Ghent Square that can be anywhere like in the 175 to 250 price range of one bed, two bath style. There are some that are three bedroom. There are some that are attached like townhouse style that aren't condos that are going to be anywhere from like the fours, fives, you can see them higher, sixes and up because they're massive townhouses. And on top of that, detached houses in the sixes and up as well. So you're gonna have a variety and you're gonna have also some green space. So you see here, Botetot Gardens is like right down the middle of Ghent Square. There are some townhouses that line Ghent Square or line Botetot Gardens that are, that are pretty cool. These are in the fours and the fives and you're overlooking this large public area. And this is the Botetot Gardens access is one of the coolest parts of being in this part of Ghent. So you can get out of your house, literally walk across the street and get to a large public access point. Now, this is a benefit too because a lot of these houses being the type that they are, townhouses or detached houses, but big, they're on smaller lot sizes. So because of that, you have very little uh, uh, personal property in your backyard. Now, if, I, if you don't like that, the fact that you have that place to go to walk your dog, for example, sidewalks, green space in Botetourt Gardens is one of the big benefits to being uh, in Ghent Square and not having to take, take care of a large backyard. So that's one of the benefits as well. This quiet element, being accessible to Ghent, all the, the access points to Ghent and also close to downtown Norfolk in The Hague, but not in the parts of The Hague that are in the higher flood zone uh, areas because The Hague can flood quite a bit, especially around Mowbray Arch near the Chrysler Museum. This area can flood quite a bit on the streets especially. So if you're getting off of there a bit, you're still having some issues with flood insurance in some parts, but it's definitely a big difference between there and as you get closer to The Hague and the southern, southern parts of, of Norfolk. So that's another benefit of being here as well. You can take a nice walk, go, through, go to the Chrysler Museum, a walk all the way down to the to the downtown Norfolk area towards Freemason, which is another cool part of town. Drop a pin here. You can get catch a coffee at uh, the uh, Cure Coffee House, which is right there. Cobblestone streets and streets in Freemason. That's all within five to ten minutes walk or a quick easy drive uh, from uh, Botetourt Gardens and Ghent Square. So for all these reasons, I think you have some great access to the rest of Norfolk. And though you're paying a lot for this area, you're getting the heart of what it is to be in Ghent and also close to downtown Norfolk uh, and also getting a newer style of house as well, which is sometimes one of the drawbacks of being in Ghent. If you have any more questions about living in this area in Norfolk or in the Hampton Roads area, drop a comment below as well, or you can reach out to me at any point. I help people from all over the world, world move to the area. So you can, you can call me, email me, text me. I have my contact information in the description. You can do that at any point and I'll do whatever I can to help you relocate to the area. And I will see you on the next video.